welcome to Transformations, Stray Talk about life, business, and spirituality. And I'm really excited today because I'm really excited about this book. And I have a beautiful author on with me today, Susan Liberty Hall. And what I love about this book is it is all about scented adventures of the Bouquet Sisters in Fairyland. And this book is the most beautiful book. Actually, I'm bringing it out of the light here. And I just can't tell you how excited I am about this book. First of all, this book is in one of my favorite colors, the ink inside. Everyone knows I'm a purple girl. So this, girl, this book is all in purple ink, and it has the most beautiful graphics by Josephine Hall, who, by the way, is one of my most favorite people of all in terms of graphics. And on top of that, she was brilliant enough to include these scented cards with scented oils. So these cards have scented oils in there. So welcome, Susan. I'm just really tickled pink to have you on. I just can't believe, you know, on top of which I love fairies and I absolutely believe that they do exist. So welcome, Susan. I'm just very happy to have you on with me today. You have no idea. I absolutely am tickled. When I saw this book arrive, <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, it was the first, I got, first of all, I got handed a whole pile of books and this was the very first one I opened and read. So just to give you any idea how excited I was. Thank you, Carly. I'm excited, too. So I'd love to find out for you to share with everybody, what was the inspiration behind this book? Thank you. It was my three beautiful grandchildren, Tatum and Kenzie Lura and Kelton Jesse. And I wanted to create a works that would be for them. And then it, it, it thought, I thought, well, I can include all the children if I made a book. So I created the book with the idea that it would help my grandchildren and then be extended to help all children everywhere. And then it occurred to me that I should put so many things in it that would be helpful to children. So I created a book for the senses, for the sense of smell, for the sense of the beautiful pictures. Everything that would be beautiful for the children that would uplift them in frequency, in vibration, something that would be lovely for them and give them a good idea of how they could do good works in their life. So that was the, the basis of my inspiration. And can you give a little bit of the characteristics of your grandchildren? Because I thought it was really fascinating how you weaved your grandchildren into this. So why don't you give a little bit of, of their personalities? Oh, thank you so much. Well, the eldest is Tatum, and Tatum is absolutely beautiful. She can do everything. She is a, a very good gymnast, and, a, and right now she's a cheerleader in her high school. So this was a few years ago when she was just 11 at that time when I started the book. And she was very amazing in her ability to understand adult things. She understood about the oils. She understood about health. She was just simply magnificent in every aspect of my wanting to teach her things. She was there. She understood it. So it was fun to do. And then the other one, the next one, that would be Kenzie Lura. And Kenzie Lura is very mystical. She's different altogether. She's amazing. She's absolutely beautiful. She sings like an angel. And because she's mystical, she understood about the fairies, and she loved them. The third one is the youngest one, and that is Kelton Jesse. And she looks like me. She's got my face. She really does. When I was a little girl, we looked alike. So she's very precious. She's very pretty and precocious. And anything her sisters can do, she is determined that she can do too. And she does love also the fairies. Now, how did you explain, how did you get into conversations with them about fairies? Because that's the other thing I think children... They're afraid to talk about the fairies because they're afraid they're going to get teased. Their, their friends are going to say, oh, that fairies don't exist. You know, that, that's not real. So how did you actually get into the conversation about the fairies with them? Well, actually, I thought a fairy tale would be the best way to bring the subjects that I had in mind for the book, for the parents and for the children. Because if it's a fairy tale, then they can say, oh, well, it isn't really real, and yet they'll get all of the concepts of the book because they're reading about it. So it just gave someone who might have uh, possibly thought, oh, I don't believe in fairies, but if you present it as a fairy tale, then they can accept it. So that was the beginning of why and how to use the fairies uh, in the book. And so you gave them, in, in an essence, you gave them an out. 
you're you're talking to about the fairies, and so they could actually tell the friends. They could actually talk about the fairies and still kind of say, well, yeah, it's just a fairy tale, even though they actually really believed in the fairies. So it gave them a way to actually really talk about the fairies and, and them actually be able to talk about it and talk with you about it, their nana or grandma or whatever their terminology. What do, what do they call you, by the way? They call me Nana Susan. See, I knew I knew that they called you Nana. You notice that was the first word I said, right, <laughs> Nana? It's like I just had yeah. that feeling. It's like it's very yeah. interesting. I love I love the different terminologies for grandmother or Nana or you know everyone has a different loving terminology for that, and um, I just find it very. It's and I think it's really interesting how kids they want they want to talk about things, but they're afraid they're gonna get teased or they're not gonna be believed and. I think I think you came up with a brilliant idea of actually weaving the storytelling. I love storytelling. I think storytelling is such a beautiful way to connect with children and allow them to really talk about what they're really feeling without feeling judged or wronged or us telling them they're lying. I think too many parents are you know are imaginary children, and it's like they're, they're or when kids are you know saying I see an imaginary child and we're saying oh that's not true that's you know that's don't do that. That you know that's going to create problems or whatever. We need to allow children to really feel what they're feeling and see what they're seeing, and let that be okay. And also to use, like you say, storytelling, so they can actually talk with other children and not be dismissed or made to be to teased or whatever. So I think it was brilliant the way you did this and allowed them to validate what they were feeling. And so, in 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 essence. Do they actually talk to you about it now? Still, do they still actually talk to you about their fairy, their fairy friends, their you know their their little stories? Yeah, they still talk about the fairies. They love the fairies because they know, first of all, that it's okay and safe for them to talk with me about them. And I'm not saying that they see the fairies; they just believe in the fairies. And so, when I created the book, and then when I was so blessed to have Josephine Wall actually give me permission to use not one but twelve of her magnificent uh, pictures that she had created of fairies and you are right she is one of the great artists of the world especially when it comes to these beautiful mystical beings the fairies so yes indeed um, the pictures of the fairies of, by Josephine Wall have captured the essence of beauty and light that is in fact the real fairy kingdom so yes my my granddaughters feel very safe they can talk to me about anything we talk a lot and they tell me things and how they feel and um, I consider that to be a privilege that I can have that kind of relationship with them now how did you get now here's the next point how did you get living oils or I'm sorry young what's the, the, the correct terminology It's because I know it's young living oils correct is that correct Yes, these are therapeutic grade, and that's very important. Young Living essential oils. Um, I had to use the Young Living oils, definitely, and there was a reason and a purpose. The, the Young Living oils will raise the frequency, the vibration of the children when they smell the scent that's in the five uh, scented cards. It's a scratch and sniff. Um, programs a scratch and sniff feature in the book so when they smell that glorious therapeutic grade oil it will raise their frequency that was important for many reasons one uh, when you have a high frequency or a high vibration you will not get diseases because every disease has a frequency and the body radiates at a normal uh, frequency megahertz frequency of between 62 and 68 and that's healthy but if it comes down to 50 or something similar to that, that's when you start to get sick, and 42 is cancer. So every time you smell a beautiful scent, which is why God gave us these glorious heavenly flowers to smell, that's aromatherapy. When you smell flowers, that's aromatherapy. And so this captures the essence not only of the flowers, but of other scents that are very important to raise the frequency of the children and to teach them the importance of the sense of smell. Now how did you get permission to from Living Young Oils to um, put them in your book? Did you get well, permission from them as well? Oh yes indeed. I'm, I'm very fortunate because I know Dr. Gary Young and his lovely wife Mary very well because Young Living Essential Oils is my business and I've been in this business since 1993 and it saved my life when I was very very ill 
So I have a very good reason to include the oils because I wanted to teach people about the therapeutic grade oils a whole lot more than just aromatherapy because you can take them topically and if they are therapeutic grade as ours are then you can also take them internally but I wouldn't suggest that with any other oils just the oils that are therapeutic grade that say on the bottle that they can be ingested and they've been approved to do so so that's why it's so important it goes along with the nutrition that I was teaching the children also now in your experience when you said that you said it saved your life I know important. I know a lot of people that do have issues that are you know medical medically oriented how in your experience how did it help you I mean what was your how did it take you from one place to another? Oh my goodness, with the, with it is the oils so amazing. Thank you for asking. Well, I was very ill because my husband had committed suicide, so I had a very serious issue in my life. And at the same time, I had become so ill with migraine headaches and chronic fatigue that I could hardly even walk. I, I lived several years of my life after my husband's suicide alone in my dark bedroom. I couldn't have any light, I couldn't have any sound, and I would just crawl to the bathroom when I needed to vomit. That was my life. So when I came into the Young Living Essential Oils, I thought, oh, how could a little bottle of oil change my life? Because financially I was devastated, emotionally, spiritually, every kind of <laughs> devastation you could imagine, I had it. I, it was hopeless, I felt hopeless. So when I first got the oil, I bought one bottle of peppermint and I began to use it for the migraine headaches as Dr. Gary Young had told me to do. Well, when I did that, I began to get better from the three week long migraine headaches that I had three weeks at a time and the vomiting began to stop and I was able to actually let light into my room and I no longer had to be contained in a dark room void of all sound. So it was astounding. And once I understood that, then I knew that I was on the road to recovery, that they were very powerful. And yes, indeed, they did change my very life. And as sick as I was, I started a young living business and I was able to make a living. I mean, it was the most miracle. I, I don't know if there's ever been any miracle in my world I could tell you about that was as great as that. And Young Living did give me permission to use the oils. Now that was a big factor for me because I had to buy these very expensive therapeutic grade essential oils for the five scratch and sniff features in the book by the gallon, by the gallon. So it was a miracle to get all together that number one, Young Living allowed me to and they helped me to. They were extremely generous, and I'm so grateful to Gary and Mary Young and Young Living Essential Oils for making it possible for me to have this book. Yeah, and, and I was, and I, and I said to you personally on our various phone calls was that I know what it took for you to create this book. First of all, I, I in the publishing world, I don't think what most people understand is a to publish a book. First of all, and color ink is not inexpensive. Yet alone putting, um, you know, scratch and sniff cards in the book with Young Living oils. So I, I know what it took for you to do this. So I really, I'm, I'm, I, 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 you know, I give you a lot of credit for doing this. And it, it is, by the way, I encourage anyone to pick this book up. It's a delight. It's, it's first of all aesthetically beautiful, um, and just your senses will be completely enlivened just sniffing the cards and um, aesthetically like I said it's just very very beautiful and not only that reading it is beautiful and for any child that you may have and I don't and this book isn't just for children by the way it's for anybody it's for adults you know teens it's just a beautiful beautiful book so I encourage anyone to get it um, it is absolutely beautiful and just and, and it does it, it's in my experience because I teach multi-sensory this is a beautiful book for multi-sensory <laughs> so I was just oh, very yeah. like I said I was a very beautiful book for me especially because I teach multi-sensory it just like completely enveloped my multi-sensory world so and um, is, there, is there anything else that you I mean we, we've been talking we've gone off a little off track because we've talked about a lot of different things I just want to um, touch back into the book though and you go into so many things I, and I, I, for me anyways, just because I really do, for me anyways, I really do believe in fairies. I do believe that we have an elemental world that I don't think, I don't think a lot of people realize that 
you know, the fairyland world, the actual storytelling world, if you actually really do take the time to look at how many times have you seen people with pointy ears, elves, or yes. you see people that are really tall and big, as I would call them, oafs, or people with yes. tiny, tiny little voices that I would actually call fairies. You can actually look at people and you can walk down the street and you can actually start to see angels and oafs and, and elves and pixies and fairies. I mean, I, I don't understand how people actually can't really see that we are living fairy tales. I mean, the essence is the characteristics. And it's, it's really fascinating to me how people don't actually see that fairy tales really do exist in the real world. They, we actually play out the archetypes. We actually play out the, the characteristics. And if anyone, I encourage people actually really to study Doreen Virtue's work or Carol and Mrs. archetype work. And you'll actually see that we really do play out these archetypes. We do, we do play out these characteristics. Have you actually studied any of Doreen Virtue's work or Carol and Mrs. archetype work? Oh yes, especially Doreen Virtue, and, and she loved my book too. She absolutely did love it, and we talked, and it was just delightful, so I, I was just amazed. And I wanted to acknowledge her uh, about the work that she does with the fairies. And it's also true that in our times, there's so many movies now about fairies, and they are depicting the fairies in the way that they were in the old days and it's becoming more and more acceptable through the film media that we do in fact have uh, the fairies but I want to share one experience with you that was especially precious to me and this was um, a lady who was taking care of my house while I was gone doing some work on the book and she called me one day she was my house sitter and she said oh Susan um, something's happened and I thought oh no I said oh my gosh what happened she said, well, I'm afraid to tell you. And I said, oh, dear, please tell me what's wrong. She said, well, you have something in your house. And I thought, oh, no, is it a spider or is it a, a scorpion because we live in the desert? Is it, is it a snake? What is it? She said, well, you have fairies. And I said, <laughs> what? She said, yeah, you have fairies. And she said, there's thousands and thousands of them. And I said, well, tell me about it. This is a woman that never saw or even thought about fairies in her life, ever. So she said, well, I was in the guest room, and I have my altar in the guest room for the fairies. And she said, I woke up early in the morning, and I saw the sunlight coming in through the blinds. And she said, at first, I thought it was dust coming in the, through the light of the window. And she said, but as, it, as I woke up, I could see teeny, tiny little beings. And she said, they were little, teeny, tiny fairies. And so she told me there were thousands of them and thousands of them. They were over by the altar. They were coming in through the window. They were playing with her hair. They were making a, another, um, just astounding things that they were doing, sweet things. And I was just so thrilled to hear. So that's why I went back to the book and I called a portion of the fairies the teeny tinies in honor of what she saw at my house verifying in fact yes I do have fairies in my house <laughs> well are you surprised that you have them in your house <laughs> I'm surprised someone else would see them I'm thrilled that they were able to be seen by others you know that's important to me that mattered to me now another person whose work is very special about fairies is Michelle Small Wright and I love her work also um, uh, behaving as if the God in all life mattered that's her book she has a website she's extraordinary in her understanding of the fairies too and she was an inspiration for my book as is uh, Doreen Virtue and I would like to speak for a moment also about the amazing work of Josephine Wall I'd like to say something to the, those who are listening today that it was amazing that I would get her permission to use 12 of her most beautiful pictures that ever existed and when I first started writing to her I'll tell you I went to a bookstore it was of course an angel bookstore and I saw the work of Josephine Wall in a, in a greeting card took the greeting card home looked on the back saw her her information Wrote, a, wrote an email, and I didn't know how to do that very well either, but I finally managed to reach her, her agent, and I received a prompt reply, no, we do not um, do those kind of, of, of things with individuals such as yourself, a grandmother who's 
has no um, real understanding of, of what it takes to make a big success, this and that. No, we don't give her her uh, permission to use these things to people. We give them to big corporations. Maybe they're doing uh, cards, greeting cards or calendars, that kind of thing. So I put the altar. I put the card on my altar and I asked the fairies to help because Doreen Virtue speaks about the, the fairies and asking for the fairies to help. And I knew that also because of other things I had learned and, and had realized about the fairies. So I put it on my altar and then I wrote another email. Well, it took me a year of writing emails and receiving no, no, no. And at, at the last time I sent, the, the email asking one last time for permission to use Josephine Wall's work in the book, I, I asked the agent to, to consider this and to ask Jos Josephine Wall to consider this, that it's more about just a big corporation and a lot of money for the client. I said, what would it look like if Josephine Wall was remembered because the children loved her pictures so much and adore the fairies and love them so much that it took the, the world of fairies to that next level through love. And guess what? That's when I got the endorsement and the ability and the, and the permission to use her work. Isn't that a great story? Yeah, oh, it's amazing. I also, can you also let everyone know where they can find you? Because like, obviously this is also going to be a podcast. So I'd love people to know where they can find you. Thank you. Okay, well, I have a website. It's www.thebokeysisters.com, and the book is available through that site. It's also available at Amazon, uh, so it's very easy to buy the book, and it's also available through Young Living Oils, too. Uh, they have um, um, Essential Science Publishing, and they have also the book for sale at their book site. So there are several ways to get it, but the easiest way would be to go to my website, and I would so love to meet everybody, listen to everybody's thoughts. They can email me at nanasusan at thebokeysisters.com, and I would love to make personal contact with people who enjoy the book like you do, Carly, dear. And also, can you spell the website once so that everyone can, in case, you know, we speak so fast sometimes, and since it is a podcast, I'd like you also to spell it one time for everybody. Oh, that, that's so kind of you. It's www.thebokuetsisters.com. Thank you. And it's just, it's amazing, I am just, I can't. I can't say enough times, but I really encourage everyone to get the book. It is Scented Adventures of the Bouquet Sisters in Fairyland. So everyone can, let me move it this way, so everyone can see the book, Scented Adventures of the Bouquet Sisters in Fairyland. It's just a delightful book. And uh, Oh, also, you were also going to mention that you do have a new book coming out, so I wanted to let you allow you to actually... Um, say what that is and um, you can also you know explain a little bit what that is so that people have an idea and it is obviously a completely top different topic than this however I'm going to be very delighted to have you back when that comes out as well thank you yes this is an amazing book I'm so thrilled it's actually a little book more like a pamphlet but it's my personal story my testimonial about how I overcame breast cancer by myself without a doctor for hundred and fifty dollars a month using an American Indian herbal formula called Two Feathers Healing Formula. And the name of the book, and it will be out probably um, around Christmas time or maybe the beginning of next year, and it's called Ha! I Laugh in the Face of Cancer. And I love that. And laughter is so important in life. I don't think people realize how important laughter is. Laughter yes. raises our vibration. And yes. um, and also music. I don't think people quite get how important music is because music, when we're in sometimes uh, a bit of despair or, or a bit of pain, vi um, music will, will raise our vibration for us. When sometimes when we can't yes. because we are in a bit of despair, like I said, or in pain, music will actually raise our vibration for us. So listening to music is really important. Music is vibration, as we all know. Now, I'm not talking about rock and roll here. I'm talking about whether it be jazz, classical, even some opera, sound yeah. vibratory music, sacred geometry music, um, yes. all sorts of beautiful Reiki, and um, just, you know, there's beautiful chakra music, just music that'll help elevate your own vibration when you're in times of 
just that you just can't raise your own vibration in that moment. But laughter is so important. I always tell people, you know, literally fake a smile and force a laughter. It'll instantly change your physiology. But I love the title of that book. That is going to be an amazing book. I can tell already. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that you understand what I'm trying to do because laughter does. That's the reason I use it. They say that laughter is the best medicine and I needed to laugh because getting those three words, you have cancer, is not an easy thing to hear at no. all. So I went no. completely to another aspect of life and it is my great hope and prayer that if people have cancer and they're interested in something other than conventional medicine, that they will remember me and I am so willing to help everyone with my personal experience because I am successful and most grateful too. Yeah, and that's what I was trying to tell people. It's like we're not, you know, we're all individualized human beings and what may work for one person may not work for somebody else. Sometimes Western works for some people, it doesn't work for everybody. Eastern may work for some people, it may not work for everybody else. Sometimes it's a both and. You have to know what works for you. And sometimes something like what you did works. You just have to be willing to believe in what works for you and be willing to step out of the box. You know, I yes. mean, you have to be willing to attempt new things and be willing to do new things. And, you know, it doesn't have to be one way or the other way. There's always new things out there. There's new, new things to use and do and explore. I mean, you know, exactly. So that's, that's amazing and that's wonderful. I can't wait till that comes out. So it's just been such a joy to have you, and thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with me and explore, and I'm just, you know, thank you for sharing your grandkids with us, and I'm just thank you so much for spending this time and exploring everything, because it's been an absolute delight, and I'm really looking forward to being with you again. So I, for tonight, we're going to say goodnight to everybody. However, I'm looking forward to next time. So... Thank you, everybody. As usual, I love leaving you valuable, you know, sharing with you valuable content, such as sharing with you um, this wonderful book, Scented Adventures of the Bouquet Sisters in Fairyland, and sharing with you Susan Liberty Hall. She's been a wonderful guest. And I will put together, as usual, a wonderful page with an embedded video, an embedded podcast. And I love feedback, so be sure to leave some. And I will have links to everything. So for tonight, it's good night. However, I look forward to being with you next week. So good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you so much, Susan. It's been a delight. Oh, my pleasure, Carly. Bless your heart. Thank you.